So this is dissolution in the manufacturing stage. So it's not dissolution uh, in the guts of the human body. This is a dissolution vessel with an impeller, a very simple system. And you have a couple of manholes and you have a shaft and the uh, impeller. Very important questions here are, first one, what will be the dissolution and the homogenization time for my specific components in that specific setup? Because components or APIs, they change all the time and you cannot always use the same scale and also not the same setup within a certain scale. So that's a very important question. Second one is how to reliably scale up but also at a decent pace and cost without having to do a lot of trial and error based testing. So two key questions here. So um, we did a couple of scenarios here with a base case, the starting vessel, let's say, and then five other scenarios. I will not go into much detail here because there's too much information, but it's, um, yeah, I will just quickly describe what we have done. We have played with the solutes. For example, we have compared sodium chloride dissolution versus glucose. Of course, glucose dissolution rate uh, is much lower than sodium chloride. We have looked how the introduction strategy through the manholes impacts performance. One manhole, two manholes. We have looked at the scale, a 50 liter vessel versus a 1000 liter vessel. And we also did something with the impeller. So let's take a look at this. So before I start the slides, yeah, this is a lot of information, it's all moving. You can see that a lot of things are happening here. Uh, I will play it again, so don't be worried. I will just explain what you see here. At the top here, this is the vessel, and what you see is the solute you add, okay? For example, sodium chloride, it mixes, starts dissolving, and finally disappears. Here you can see the same, but in a curve. So this is the mass of solutes as a function of time. And of course, if it reaches zero, you have complete dissolution. What you see here is the dissolution curves. So the amount of mass that has been dissolved, the average, the black one is the real dissolution curve, or the maximum concentration locally observed in the vessel, and the minimum, which is the red line, observed concentration in the vessel. Of course, if the minimum, the maximum, and the average coincide, you have a complete homogenization. And what you see here is the dissolution rate. So the speed of dissolution, of course, initially, when you have nothing dissolved, the speed is very high. So I will just play everything one more time so you see what's happening. Uh, here you see that uh, you almost reach complete dissolution, and then you have also reached final homogenization. In this specific case, the time for complete homogenization was around 16% longer than the complete time for dissolution. We will just explain why this happens. So this is the, again, the non-dissolved mass, what you have seen before. We add the powder to one manhole, and then this is the dissolved mass. So it starts dissolving, of course. So this is in the liquid phase, and this is the solid. So let's play them again. You get the dissolution at the left, but at the right, you can see that there is still some work to be done at the homogenization side. So this takes way longer in this specific setup, okay? It's very sp setup specific. Um, so this gives a lot of insights, of course, if you change the impeller or, or diameter or scale, uh, things will, of course, look very different. So let's look at all these scenarios together. Um, for example, the biggest difference as we can expect is between glucose and sodium chloride. You can see that glucose takes much longer to dissolve or to completely dissolve compared to sodium chloride. But if we look into the sodium chloride scenarios, you can see that there is quite a difference between the full scale, 1000 liter scale in this, in this uh, case, and the smaller 50 liter scale, which are the other three curves. And uh, you should actually compare the full scale, the one, one manhole with the one manhole, the orange curve of the 50 liter vessel. Uh, but the added dose was a bit more. So that's why the, the, the maximum of the curves uh, deviates a bit. But you can see actually, if you look at these dissolution curves, that the impact of scale components, and if you would, if you would change your temperature, well, all these things would, of course, uh, drastically impact. And let's just look at the case, uh, the same kind of plots, but for a changed impeller at the bottom, 
It's now at the bottom here uh, under an angle. You see the dissolved, non-dissolved mass. And if you study this again, you see that the pattern is different. You can get kind of an embracement, right? So the bottom layer embraces the top layer. Uh, so hydrodynamics, of course, can be quite different if you change uh, certain specs.